Republican <laughs> Senator Bob Corker is introducing bipartisan legislation to cap federal spending. How about that idea? He's also on the Senate Banking Committee, uh, which puts him in a good position for all of this. He joins me now. Senator Corker, welcome back to America's Newsroom. It's always great to have you, sir. Welcome. Good morning, Martha. Always good to be with you. All right. So talk to me about this. You know, we saw John McCain on the floor with this huge stack of this bill that nobody's going to get a chance to even read through uh, before they're supposed to vote on it. What's your take? It's uh, pretty incredible. I, I just want to hold this up. These are just the earmarks that are in the bill. It's 1,924 pages, 6,000 earmarks. It's an incredible thing that, uh, that with what's happened, especially in this election with the $13 trillion in debt that you just mentioned, that we'd even be considering something like this. There's a big push by myself and others to end up with a short-term, what's called a continuing resolution, where we move and just allow government to be funded till this next February or March where we can really look at reducing spending. I think people understand that uh, spending is out of control in Washington. They way understand that. And what we need to do is cap spending right. as a percentage of our country's gross domestic product. I'm thankful that uh, Claire McCaskill, who you just referred to, has joined me in that effort to have a number of Republicans, and I'm hoping that we can yep. pass legislation to cap spending here at the federal I, level. I, I, I want to I want to talk to you a little bit more about that, but first, what you know, what about these hundreds of pages of earmarks? Is this omnibus bill going to pass? Is this budget going to pass? And if so, when? Yeah, we're doing everything we can to keep that from happening, and uh, you know, obviously, the vote will take place. Probably, it, it may be the last piece of action that we take here. Uh, this year in the Senate, I hope that it does not pass. If it passes, what it does is it really takes away the opportunity for us this entire next year to, to decline in spending. I mean, we have a debt ceiling vote that's going to be coming up in April, May, or early June, depending on when we hit the debt ceiling. And it's my hope that we're going to be able to really put in place these constructs to drive down spending before that. If we pass this bill that you're referring to, what it does is really kick the can down the yeah, road in an I, entire you know, year, and it, it flies in the face of everything people spoke about during this last election. Yeah, and, you know, just even the concept of this passing, with, with, the, with the amount of earmarks in it that you just showed us, and people say, oh, earmarks are a small percentage of everything, but that doesn't even matter. It's the, the principle of it. People are completely fed up with this, and I don't frankly think they're going to stand for it anymore, Senator. Uh, you know, and I'm wondering how strong the force will be against this, and if everybody's willing to stay there and hammer this thing out uh, and show the American American people that they that they do indeed for real this time get it and they're not going to allow these earmarks to go through yeah, yeah. well look I can assure you that uh, I plan on laying on the railroad tracks I'm glad that people like you and others are bringing this to Americans attention and the fact is that this is exactly the wrong thing to do so thank you uh, I can't believe look we're supposed to pass these appropriations bills one at a time so we can go through right. each one take out wasteful programs and do those kind of things. When you get a 1,924 page bill like this, that as you mentioned, you can't even read in time to pass it, okay? That is wrong. Yeah. That, is, that is flying in the face of the responsibility that we have here in the United States Senate. I hope it doesn't pass. Yeah. I hope that saner thoughts will prevail. I'm going to do everything I can to make that happen. Yeah, I think a lot of people out there certainly hope that, that you will and that, you, that you're right about that in the end. One more question about this debt ceiling issue. Uh, this debt ceiling just keeps going higher and higher and higher. It's like if you ask regular folks out there, uh, would you keep pushing your credit card limit? higher and higher and higher and higher, even though you're going deeper and deeper into debt, most of them would say, of course not. That would be ridiculous. Why would we even consider moving the debt ceiling higher at all in the new year? Yeah. Well, you know, the, 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 the way the debt ceiling works is it's like running up your credit card bill, as you just mentioned, but then not agreeing to pay the bill. Right. So the fact is, we've already spent this money. And a lot of people would say that it's irresponsible not to pass the debt ceiling because that's like saying you're not going to pay the bill. I've come to the conclusion that it's irresponsible not to act responsible prior right. to voting for the debt to, ceiling. To and that's what it. I hope will happen. In other words, my point is we need to take actions to yeah. really reduce spending. I think the bond markets, the world markets are going to run from our indebtedness if we don't act responsibly soon. When that begins to happen, Martha, as you know, it happens really yep. quickly. All of a sudden, a crisis ensues. So mm -hmm. hopefully, the American people, I think, know this, but hopefully I here in Congress, do. we'll act, we'll act yeah. responsibly this spring and put a cap Senator, on Senator, I, I think there's a lot of folks thank out you. there who hope uh, you're right about that, and we thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Senator Bob thank Corker. You.